Да. Так можно начинать уже. Uh, so uh, I want I would like to uh, pre precise that uh, because uh, maybe uh, notation was not very uh, good. So this function again this is just a very simple function on real line t uh, which shifts t onto t. This is the identity function, yes? So this operator which is equivalent uh, to the unitary equivalent to our operator it is very very simple in some sense only it's the measure Okay, only the measure is sophisticated in some sense. The measure me is sophisticated because this is the uh, spectral measure for the operator and the vector. It's very sophisticated in and to find a formula for this measure is not so easy. Yes, but when we forget about the measure, the operator is simple. So, and the operator works like this. When we have a class of a function f, you can think that this is a function, yes? But because of the, the, of the future, I would like to think about classes, not about the functions. And the operator acts just by multiplying f of t by t, yes? For each t in, from a real line. So this is quite simple. Uh, in some sense, this is a, a diagonal operator, so, but of course, in the special sense, yes, it's diagonal. It's multiplying by a function. One uh, very, very simple in some sense operator, but very important and, uh, and complicated uh, from another uh, sense because. All the difficulties are hidden in the measure, in the measure mu. Yes. So, so this is so this is interesting theorem. So, but uh, uh, let us continue the, the proof. Okay. Uh, so we know what we know. We know that our unitary operation operator shifts all the monomials. Yes, monomials, uh, the functions of, of the form t to the power n, yes, this is the function x to the power n, which means that uh, x to the power n of t is just t to the power n. So this is a monomial. So we know that it shifts such a class of the monomial onto such, a, such an element. So let us look what we have. When we take the inverse operator to this U and we uh, look for something like that. We take an element, let us call it uh, Y. For such Y of this form, when Y is of the form A to the power N on Phi, and we act on such an element y by the, our operator a, and then we take the inverse operator u, so what we obtain? First of all, we see that this is the same what a to the power n plus 1 of phi, yes? And then, when we look here, we see that this is just the class of the element x to the power n plus 1. Yes? And this is x times x to the power n by the definition of x to the power n, n plus 1. Yes? So then we can write this in this form. That this is the, our operator, our new fundamental operator t, uh, of multiplication by x acting on the class x to the power n, yes? And 
again recurring this formula, which is the same, we see that this is that this one is this is just u to the power of minus one of our y. Yes? So what we proved by this simple calculation? We proved that such a formula, when we take just here and here, we take just u on the both sides. Yes? Here we take u and here we take u. So we see that we obtain here just a on y and here we have u t x, the multiplication, u, the inverse of u on y. So we obtained this for each element of such a form. Yes? So this is almost, we can say, it's very, it's very much because, uh, of course, when we have this on some set of vectors, we have the same also by linearity on the linear span, and the linear span is dense. And this is the, something uh, which starts to be uh, interesting, yes? Because in the case when A was bounded, we can just finish, because by continuity of both sides, we know that, in this case, that when it was true on the dense space, it's also true on the all the space, and then we obtain just this, the last part which we wanted to obtain. Again, when we don't know that it, is, uh, it was a bounded operator, but we know, uh, but we assume this assumption I told you about, that this is essentially, essentially cyclic. Yes? So then it's also okay. It's obvious because then we can uh, say like this. A was, A is self-adjoint. Uh, this is also self-adjoint because this is self-adjoint, of course. The multiplication operator by the real function is also self-adjoint. On the domain, of course, it, it's, it's uh, typical domain, maximal domain. So, then we have the equality on of two, uh, of two uh, self-adjoint operators on the subspace which is an essential subspace for one of, the, of them. So by the essential uh, self-adjoinders, the, the, those two operators should be equal. So this is why I thought it's, necess it's the necessary assumption from this theory. And now let us see that this is also not important. That everything what we have now is enough to get this result also without these extra assumptions. And uh, the idea is quite easy. You see that what is convenient? Convenient is to get such kind of the results when we have bounded operators. Because we, when we have bounded operators, we don't have problems with domains some which can be very uh, delicate as you as we know because many unbounded operators have uh, uh, um, a lot of self-adjoint self uh, extensions for instance and, and to obtain such a result it's uh, sometimes a miracle yes and the idea is very simple uh, how to shift the technically the problem from unbounded operators to bounded operators. So what we know? We know that for each self-adjoint operator uh, there exists a unique spectral measure. Spectral measure which for each Borel set gives 
just a, a projection which is bounded operator. So the idea is just to shift this problem from the operator itself into their spectral projections which are bounded. And this is the main idea and uh, it's just a simple calculation I will write it down. So, uh, Okay. So, what is enough? It's enough when we want to prove this. It suffices to prove that when we consider instead of A, the spectral projection for A, for a fixed, for each fixed border set, and we make the same with this operator, so the same relation holds. So it's sufficient to write like this. Uh, I will so maybe this is the same what uh, u to the power minus 1 a u equals t x this is the same but more convenient for me so I will write it like this I take the spectral measure of t of x I fix omega borel Borel set of R, R, and I take this for for n yes, n omega. I would like to obtain that this is the same what u to the power minus one, and then the spectral projection of A for this omega u. Yes, and using the spectral theorem, which says that the spectral measure is unique for the operator, yes, if we have this, we will get also this. So this is the main idea. And now the problem is how to get this. So first, we know also, this is also from the unicity of the spectral measure, that we can get with those uh, unitary equivalents here. So this is the same what yes. So we must so this is convenient because now we are in the same space. Both projections are in the same sp space. So this is what we should prove. Yes. And this is just a calculation now. Because uh, the spectral resolutions, the spectral projections for multiplication by function operators are well known. It can be write down simply. What is this? This is also uh, an operator of multiplication, but by a very simple function, by characteristic characteristic function of omega. The spectral projection of such a multiplication operator is just the multiplication the operator by characteristic function I will write, uh, I will use the, this notation for the characteristic function of the set. So this is the function which is equal 1 on the set and 0 uh, on other points of R. Yes? So this is equal to the operator <coughs> of multiplication by the function, characteristic function of omega. 
Yes, and what we can write about this? Uh -huh. It may be... Um, okay. Was it? I'm sorry, maybe it was not a very, uh, very important step. Um, I will write it in a slightly and uh, different uh, in a slightly yes in some sense it was primary and it was secondary yes uh, it was yes I should start from this and then get uh, go here and then I would like to uh, multiply by you both sides so it's better it's, it's more convenient to write like this. This is what we need. I'm sorry. So here we get and you. So yes, this is equivalent to this. And uh, so here we must write. This is the left side. Left side of this equality we would like to prove. And what what is here? Uh, so we should. I would like to recall my the main idea. Why we shifted the problem to the spectral projections? Because for spectral projections, uh, we know that these are bounded operators, and to check some equalities, it's enough by continuity. It's enough to check to check it on dense subsets. And we know a lot about uh, uh, some dense subsets. Yes, we know that, that this, the, the, the space, uh, the polynomials are dense in one space, yes, uh, which means that such a vector uh, spans the dense subsets. So we will check everything on such uh, on such uh, spaces, on, the, on such vectors, and when we check this for all, for all n, we will get the equality for all the vectors. question is now like this. We take n, 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 yes, and our question is whether u on t on the characteristic mm, okay, characteristic function of uh, uh, omega on the element x to the power n, the class of it, yes, is it equal to a of e of a of omega on u on the same element? And it's quite simple. Because here, what we can write? Well, here we can just write that this is u on the class. Yes, we just multiply. This operator is very simple. We multiply this function by this function. So this is the class of the characteristic function of omega times x to the power n function. Yes, by the definition of the multiplication uh, operator. And this, this, we know. We know what is this, yes? We know what is this because we can look here. So, this is, this is just the same. 
and here we have a to the power n of phi. Yes? Okay, and so let us write down this. What is this? Uh, okay, we can look uh, here. This is the formula, just the formula which we proved. Yes, the formula is like this. This is for all the uh, Borel functions, including this function, of course. So what we should do? We should take this function of A, so we take this function, which is the product of two functions, yes, we take this function of the operator, operator A, and we apply this to the vector, the, the cyclic vector phi. Yes? This is what we, what we have here. And here, what we have, here, uh, okay, here it is the product of two operators. This is one operator, which is a function of A. What kind of function of A is the is a spectral projection. It is just the same what the characteristic function of omega of A. Yes? This is from spectral calculus. So this is such a function. And this is another function of the operator. This is just A to the power N and phi. So we take first this and then we apply this. So again we have the functional calculus, yes? And what we know? We know that usually this is not the same to multiply two functions and to... Я забыл сложение двух функций, как это по-английски. Okay, so, but th this is not the same, yes? But there is the, the important relation that uh, the, this, this operator, when we have two functions, f and g, and we have f of the a, and then we apply, first we apply this, yes, and then this to an x, uh, so uh, this is the smaller one. This is the inclusion between two operators. So this is included in f times g applied to a. So, but this pro just belongs to, to both domains, so this should be equality. So this is equal, so this is also equal. So this is that of the proof. So as you see, it's, it's just very easy, yes? So the main idea was to change, to, to think about the spectral projections. So this is the end of the, uh, of the first part of the lecture, but it started to be the second part, I'm sorry. So I am late in some, in some sense. And now, uh, the idea is to uh, make the similar, to prove the similar theorem for more general case. So I should introduce uh, the notion of matrix measure and then of, uh, uh, of uh, A2 matrix uh, measure spaces, yes? So first about some matrix measures. Uh, and now, I'm sorry, almost all the proof Proofs should be found in the manus my manuscript. I will, I will give her the link for everybody. To everybody. Maybe, maybe I will use first this part of the blackboard, but I should clean it.
So, we would like to use something which is similar to the uh, situation when we have a set, a sigma algebra of subset of omega, so this is our main set, later, it later, but not now, it will be real line at this sigma algebra would be the Borel sets algebra. And before we had a measure, just a measure, uh, and uh, even so we used finite measure. Uh, yes, but instead of this, we, sh we will use something different. Yes? But, so, we don't have a measure, but we have the set and sigma algebra. And now consider instead of a measure, we consider, and we have a, a number d. A number d will, will be the size of the matrix, of matrices of our set. To that dim dimension. D because of the dimension, yes. So d is a natural number. In particular, when d will be 1, we will just get uh, the measure, the usual measure. When we identify one by one matrix with a number, it will be the same, yes? Okay, so let us consider the function M. Uh, M is defined on this sigma algebra. It should be uh, well, it's, it's a letter which, which is not so easy to write. Uh, and so to each a subset of this, which is in the sigma algebra, we, uh, uh, we give a, a matrix, a matrix, matrix uh, D by D, uh, complex matrix. Yes, this is complex matrix. Hmm? We use the same letter M capital. No, this is all. Oh, this is not the same. I'm sorry, but uh, this is this is uh, to all together. This is the set of. This is the set of all matrices. This is the D, 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 D. This is the yes. It it was uh, introduced before, but this is D times D. Yes, and terms are complex, and this M denotes the function. It will be later soon. It will be matrix measure. So it will be this instead of mu. Yes, instead of mu, we will have M. And this is another kind of M, I'm sorry. This is Gothic M, yes. The sigma algebra. So the definition is like this. M is a matrix measure. And we should be careful because those, this name uh, hide an important value, an important information. It's not just the measure with uh, the vector measure which has the values here. No. The important thing is that each element is non-negative. Yes, but this is very important. And uh, this is not my name, but the, the popular name, so I would maybe use another name, but I don't want to, to change the existing terminology. So, matrix measure, we also say on the sigma algebra, M gothic, D by D also, sometimes we say, if and only if, two conditions holds. First, M is countably additive, okay, countably additive, in any sense, in a norm, we can say in norm here, but this is the same what uh, 
on each term of the matrix, of course, yes, because this uh, convergence is the same in norm and for each term, yes. So uh, this is first condition, and the second condition is I told you that for any omega. This is a non-negative matrix. It's very important. So we could say that this is M D C vector non-negative measure. Yes, because we, uh, sometimes we speak about the vector measures, uh, about the complex measure, and in some sense I will um, show this uh, soon that. This is very, very. Uh, these are very, very strong conditions for 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 vector measure to satisfy such condi conditions. Uh, so, and uh, we can say that this is even more specific, m more. Uh, m uh, more similar to the usual. Uh, to the usual measure, I mean non-negative, then the complex measure. The complex measure is just uh, something which is uh, countable additi additive and has uh, complex values. Cannot have an infinity value, yes, but have... So this is some, somewhat similar to finite measure, but this is not finite measure, but we can always define uh, the variation of this, another uh, non-negative measure, which is the variation, and it seems to be quite good. And this is something which is, from one point of view, more complicated, because the values are matrices. But on another hand, you will see it's very, it has very, very good properties. Okay. Uh, it's now it's uh, n set. This is just n set, and this is an al a sigma algebra of in this. Uh, omega capital is omega capital belong to. Yes, yes. Sigma uh, sigma algebra. I mean, yes, because yes, it's true. In some sense, yes, 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 yes. So, uh, yes, it's true that there exists a lot of terminologies with sigma algebra. I uh, we, we use yes, but uh, I I uh, I typically in Polish I use another one, sigma chao. This uh, sigma it's sigma bad sigma body, but it means that the empty set belongs. Uh, the difference of two sets belongs, uh, omega belongs, uh, and uh, you can make a countable uh, sum. And this is so, you having this, you can do everything. You, uh, yes. So, om omega also belongs here. Yes, it's important. Okay. Uh, Okay, and uh, and what we uh, have? Let us define also when we have a matrix measure. Let us define a complex measures. For let us take a uh, a and j uh, a and j are from one to d. So for each term of the matrix, we can say in each row and in uh, a column, we can consider the appropriate uh, complex measures. It will, it will be complex measure, so it's, they are defined on, on the same sigma algebra, but values with the values in C, complex measures. Yes, mm, and uh, and a proposition about some basic, some simple basic uh, properties. We can say uh, when M is 
matrix measure, <coughs> then this is finite additive also. And this is the same, well, you can say this is countable additive, it's better, not, not every time. Uh, we, sh we should know that the empty set has zero measure, and this is here, fortunately, it's true. It's easy, to, uh, very easy to, to prove it. So, this is finite, finite additive, I will not write what does it mean, you know what does it mean, I, I hope. And this is monotone. So I will write this. What does it mean? When we have two uh, two subsets uh, from the sigma algebra, uh, or omega and omega prime. So when omega is included in omega prime, uh, then uh, m of omega is less or equal than. Uh, M of omega prime in those those sense and uh, what does it mean? It means that the difference is non-negative. Is just it so. This is the yes. This is because uh, here also there are maybe two or more definitions of the in, of the inequality for matrices. So we use the Hilbert space. Uh, uh, convention that this equality is the equality of four forms. Is equality of four forms. So uh, when we have two matrices, A is less or equal than B. When and uh, we use this only for self-adjoint matrices. Yes. So this means that both are self-adjoint, self-adjoint, and oh. Okay, for complex spaces, it will uh, follow from the from the, from the inequality. Also, when we know that uh, the form is real, so it should be self-adjoint. That for any uh, vector x uh, here from C D, because those matrices are in C D, just the scalar product in C D A X X X X or equal the x x where this is the scalar product inside the cd here and here yes this is the inequality and the same was for this non-negativity here of course yes so this was the zero operator zero matrix okay uh, monotone so we have the monotone monotonicity and the next is about those uh, scalar complex uh, measures for m a j m a j is a complex measure and m a j is just m j a uh, Soprażono, jak, jak po angielsku zabył. Conjugate, yes, conjugated. And M A A is a finite measure just. Yes. Okay, so this is a special this is they have the special special form but this is not everything this is only and this is very easy to prove uh, now very important uh, very important uh, property which follows from this is the following I, I can write it down here also for any omega and omega prime measurable uh, if we have such a situation that omega is uh, contained in omega prime maybe better to the other direction omega prime let it be smaller okay so if m of this bigger is zero then 
also n of omega prime is zero, which is almost obvious for from this monotonicity, because for matrices, when we know that we have such a situation, when we know this, then A should be zero matrix. It's easy to prove, yes, because well, we can see this on, on eigenvalues, just process. So, having this, we obtain from the monotonicity, we, we obtain this. And observe that, for instance, such a property is not true, a similar property is not true for complex matrices. When you have uh, complex uh, measures, when, when you have complex measure, you can have a set which have complex measure zero, but a subset can, be, can have non-zero non measure, yes? So this is very specific kind of uh, vector, say, matrix, uh, ve matrix value measure. But we should distinguish matrix valued measure and matrix measure, yes? So this is matrix measure, which is not only the matrix valued measure. It has, for instance, such a very convenient property, which is just a property which we know for uh, for measures, for usual measures, I mean non-negative, uh, non-negative measures. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, just non-negative measures in sense of scalar <coughs> measures. Yes. So this is important, but this is not everything. We have something more. Uh, so, what we can do? We can find. Uh, look here. For any i, this is a finite measure. So when I take the trace of m of omega, I will sum d such finite measures, and I will also obtain a finite measure. So we shall consider for each matrix measure. Uh, okay, I, I think I make I can make it here. So let us define for M matrix measure we define something which I will uh, denote like this trace M trace M will be the new measure, scalar measure and non-negative measure write this like this. <coughs> and this is just the trace of M of omega and it will it is equal you can write it yes. This is a very convenient, this is a very convenient uh, and very important uh, usual measure, measure we can say. Uh, we we'll call, we'll call this trace, the trace measure for the matrix measure M. And the proposition uh, if M is a matrix measure. I, J 
are absolutely continuous with respect to the trace measure for M. What does it mean? It means that when for a set omega the trace measure is zero, then also m of omega is zero and also each m i j is zero. And why this is true? Oh, instead of the proof I will give uh, on uh, an exercise from matrix from matrix calculus calculus we can say so matrix matrix theory hint for the proof but we can say that this is a proof this is the lemma for matrices uh, if a is uh, a non-negative matrix then a is less equal trace of trace of A, this is the number times identity, this is the matrix. And it's easy to prove because this is the diagonal matrix so we can make the common diagonalization and everybody, I think, can prove this and using this we just obtain this. So this is very simple observation but very, very important. Uh, okay, so now we will use this property and we will apply uh, Ragon Nikodim theorem. I will find the densities. When we have the absolute, absolute continuity, then for complex measure we can find the densities. Of course, so for each M, A, J complex measure, we can find uh, the density, so we can write this measure as uh, the density. This I will write this density like this. Uh, what is my notation? This is M because this is for M. Uh, so M and A J. Yes. So it will be the density for this measure with respect to this trace measure so this is equal and again d but in another meaning i'm sorry d has a lot of meanings here this is a dimension this is this function and this is the derivative uh, in the measure theory trace of m so this function is not uniquely determined, is determined up to the zero measure, this zero measure. Uh, and this is not very important which one we choose. And we will usually choose uh, as good as possible. I will show you what will be good for us soon. So, having this, we can construct the, this, these are functions. Yes, these are functions. So each now each d and a j is a function on omega, which is measurable and has complex values. So now we will make a matrix. Yes. So we will define something uh, which I will call d m la, uh, big. Uh, capital D, <coughs> maybe I don't know. It's capital or this is calligraphic. It's between this. This is okay. I will write this. So D M will be. This is measurable. This is this will be also measurable function, but 
uh, this is into matrices MDC and the term AJ is just uh, is just the small d M A J of T. Yes, when we fix all those functions which are not fixed but are defined up to measure zero C set, we also get something like this which is, so we can say this is also not fixed, but uh, the number of terms is finite, so this is also zero measure uh, uncertainty, we can say, yes, for those methods. So, uh, we can change those uh, values of those matrix only on uh, any uh, trace uh, M, uh, zero uh, set without any problem. Yes, it will not change anything. And we can write uh, the formula here, maybe here, not to change the, the camera. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what I would, would like to say. I would like to, to give a, a name to this capital D. It will be called the trace density. D, um, the name is trace density for M. which is defined up to the zero measure set. So, we can write the similar, uh, similar, mm, use the similar notation, we can say that just the matrix measure M is equal to d m d trace m yes which means that uh, on each term it is true on each a j uh, term this is true yes so i will write this like this uh, okay and what does it mean in fact what does it mean it uh, uh, it means that when we have uh, any measurable omega and we would like to compute the matrix which is equal to this, we should just compute the integral over omega of the matrix function dm and integration is just by the scalar measure trace m. Somebody can write this t if it's more understandable, but it's not important. Yes. Okay. So this is uh, when this integral is can be uh, understood like on each term. Like scalar, we take the scalar integ in, uh, integral on each term aj, yes. Or, if you want, we can consider the, uh, the integral in matrices in norm. This is also popular. But this is the Lebesgue, the Lebesgue uh, integration. This is important. This is the real Lebesgue integration, yes. Is the DM non negative matrix? DM of D. I will prove this. Yes. It is very important. No, proof. I will write down this, but there's not enough time to prove it. But this is a very important property of the density. <coughs> so you really see that this is very special. To be a matrix measure, it's, it's a lot, yes? Uh, 
position. And trace density dm of matrix measure. Um, I wrote this N because of this uncertainty on the zero sets. It's zero measure sets. Uh, satisfies. Uh, D in DM of T is self adjoint and moreover it satisfies such an inequality that this is non negative at the point T and less or equal than identity matrix. Identity matrix? No, and we should write here for almost every, every for almost each T, uh, almost each, how to write it, for, I'm sorry, right, let's write it like this, for, this is with respect to the measure, trace measure, yes, for trace measure uh, almost each t belonging to omega. It should be like this. And the proof is quite easy. We should just consider uh, we should just consider um, the, uh, the forms for each element x. Yes. for each element x and then uh, it's important to uh, to <coughs> obtain those uh, zero measure sets not to consider all the uh, uh, x x's but the countable number of x so this is the general idea yes but uh, it's it's really not very difficult uh, and so, so we now know what will be important uh, when we want to choose uh, as uh, a trace density. It's also, it will be not uh, the unique choice, but we usually we will usually choose such uh, trace density to have this property not only for almost each t, but to have this for each, just to each for each t. Especially this is convenient to have this for each t. This is not very important, I think, but it's true. Okay. Uh, some way to the second break. The, yes, the second break. So I will write. Uh, okay, it's uh, in in five minutes. Okay. So I will. Uh, I would like to say something something more about this density. So, it can be also easily computed from this. This is a remark. Remark is like this. For n a j, uh, when we, when we uh, want to see the terms, they are also important. So, when we look at the terms of the matrix, so this small d densities, yes? Uh, this a i j, and we take the absolute value. Uh, ah, what? Yes, this is okay. This is less or equal to it's, uh, we can also prove this. No, for uh, almost each t in the sense of trace m, yes? 
Mm. Yes, this is uh, one. Okay. What is important also? Uh huh. Uh, and now maybe it's good to show uh, uh, when we we now know that this is very uh, very convenient to have a uh, to have a uh, matrix measure. So how can we obtain a general example of matrix measure? Yes, this we should understand this. Okay. So uh, example of of the general general examples of matrix measure. So, so consider first a measure. Let me be just a scalar measure, a scalar measure. So. A measure, a measure on the sigma algebra m, so the scalar measure, the non-negative measure, as we, as we say sometimes, and consider f, which is just a measurable function from omega to matrices. So matrix function uh, and assume that f is a non-negative. F. So assume that f is a non-negative matrix function, which is also we can say of the L1 of mu. Class. It means that each term as a function belongs to this L1 of mu class. Just to to, uh, to integrate, so that we can integrate. Yes. Uh, yes. Then. Uh, then. Uh, then consider something like this. Then M, which is of the form F D mu, in the sense as before, is is a matrix measure. Yes. So it means that when we want to calculate this we should integrate this function over omega by this measure with respect to this measure so we will obtain the matrix measure and the inverse is true we saw this yes because uh, for each matrix uh, measure we could find a function like this and we even knew more about this function than this is of of this form uh, we even knew that we can do this with a finite measure, this measure being finite, and uh, with this function being uh, less or equal to identity. And we can easily, this is just an exercise, how to compute uh, the trace density for such a measure, and how to compute the, the trace uh, measure for such a measure. So this is simple computation. So I leave it. But uh, you see, so we can say that this is not very complicated uh, notion, this matrix measure, and very convenient because it has many convenient properties. So this is a good uh, moment to uh, 
to make the break before the next part. <laughs>